rounding up my best sewing tips for beginners in this episode. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. I upload weekly videos about sewing crafts and DIY projects. We've all seen those flashy viral sewing hacks. This is not that type of video. These are practical, simple things I've learned over the years from sewing that I wanna share with new sewists. And be sure to stay tuned to the end because I'm going to share some advice on what type of projects you should tackle when you're new to sewing. Pre-washing fabric. Should you do this with every project? My general rule of thumb is to pre-wash whenever I know I plan to launder the item afterward, like clothing and pillowcases. Remember that fabrics like cotton, linen, and rayon shrink, so that's why it's especially important to pre-wash those. Wool and silk shrink also, but they are specialty types of fabric, so be careful with these. Many sewists get their wool pre-shrunk at the dry cleaners and gently hand wash silk. You will want to dry clean any items made with those fabrics. Polyester, acrylic, and other synthetic fibers don't shrink, so it's not necessary to pre-wash, but you certainly can. I don't wash fabric pre-cuts because the pieces are so small. These are mainly used by me for quilts and smaller items, and I tend not to pre-wash those. And here's how you can prevent that fabric from fraying in the laundry. On the raw cut edges perpendicular to the selvage, you can either run them through a serger if you have one, or stitch a line about a quarter inch from the edge using a standard sewing machine. Either of these methods will cut down on the fabric unraveling. See these before and after shots of the surged edges. Now the sewn edges. When pre-washing fabric, I do a cold wash cycle with the tap cold temperature and use a detergent like Woolite, which is how I normally do laundry. I always throw in a shout color catcher just in case of color bleeding. Then I pop into the dryer on low heat for only about 10 minutes. I find it easier to press damp fabric rather than completely dry fabric. Now it's ready to rock and roll. Let's talk needles and thread. With needle size, the larger the first number, the bigger the eye of the needle. With standard thread, the larger the number, the finer it is. If you find your thread is getting shredded, it's breaking or skipping stitches, you may want to try the next size up needle. Change your needle often. I like to do it for each large project. When sewing a seam, hold the tails in one end to avoid a rat's nest or the excess thread from getting caught up in your stitching. Glue basting eliminates the need for pins or clips, and it's super easy with Elmer's washable school glue in a fine tip bottle. Just run a thin line of glue within the seam allowance area, place your fabric together, and hit it with a dry iron. The pieces should stay together until you sew them. You do need to specifically use that type of glue because it washes out, and I normally do this technique on seams that don't need to be pressed open because then you'd have to pull the glued together fabric apart. It's great for quilt piecing and even during the binding process. It works best on fibers like cotton, linen, and rayon, even some cotton poly blends, but not synthetic fabrics like polyester. Sewing lightweight or slippery fabrics can be tricky, so sometimes I soak the uncut fabric or already cut pattern pieces interior magic, which temporarily stiffens fabric into a paper-like consistency. Now you have to use a natural fiber, a rayon, anything cotton, or even like a cotton poplin or a lawn, but it has to be mostly a natural fiber, like no polyester here. Then I press with an iron while slightly damp. This makes the fabric much easier to work with and sew. To restore it back to normal, just gently launder or hand wash. Here's my way of doing an easy narrow hem using both a serger and a sewing machine. This is especially great for curved edges. Serge the hem as close to the raw edge as possible but still shaving off a tiny bit of fabric. You do want a clean finished seam to work with. This is the Brother 1034D serger and the settings are stitch width of seven and a stitch length of four. What I'm doing is creating a guide for folding. Serging the edges makes it easier to maintain a uniform hem without measuring or pinning. Fold the edge over twice. Edge stitch close to the inner fold a little under a quarter inch from the bottom of the hem. And this is my favorite hack for sewing a narrow hem with the least amount of frustration, no measuring, marking, or pins. Here's my trick for sewing all of the fabric layers to a zipper at once. It involves Fabri-Tac glue. Starting with the zipper tape, glue each layer together within the seam allowance, which I'm doing about a half inch. You don't need any pins or clips and the pieces are secure and won't shift around. Stitch all the layers on one side together. My favorite tool for marking fabric is the purple air soluble pen. I use it for pattern markings, quilt lines, placement of things like shirt pockets or bag handles. 
The ink disappears on its own within a few days or when the fabric gets wet. I've been asked a lot what sewing machine presser foot I use, and for the most part, it's the walking foot. What does it do? A walking foot has a built-in fabric feeding system that moves and holds fabric between your sewing machine's upper and lower feed dogs to better control layers of fabric and help prevent fabric shifting. I have a whole other video just about the walking foot if you want to check that out. Sourcing cheap fabric. Use clearance bed sheets, tablecloths, or old bed sheets for muslins and just playing around. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get started sewing. I have both the Clover Press Perfect Hot Hammer and Hot Ruler. Both see a lot of action in my sewing room. They allow you to fold, measure, and press hems in one step, thanks to the heat-resistant material that also lets steam pass through. The non-slip surface holds the fabric in place. Use an extra chopstick for a stiletto or point turner instead of buying one specifically for this purpose. Scissors. I recommend three types. Dressmaking or tailor shears, at least 8 inches long. Smaller scissors for tasks like clipping corners and notches. And bent handle curved embroidery scissors to get really close to your project to cut thread and use at the sewing machine. Get a clear quilting ruler, rotary cutter, and cutting mat. Even if you're not a quilter, you'll end up using these tools a lot, because patterns often require you to cut straight lines, and this will help you with accuracy and speed. Apply interfacing before you cut out a pattern piece so you don't have to worry about lining up the pieces just right, and don't give yourself additional work of tracing and cutting the interfacing. Now, when you're a beginner, you don't know what you don't know, and I've seen a lot of new sewists try to tackle projects that I think are probably a little beyond their skill level, and in the end, they're going to be frustrated, and you're not going to build any confidence as a seamstress. So here's a couple recommendations if you are really just getting into sewing, you don't know what you're doing yet. First of all, work with woven fabrics. Woven fabrics are not stretchy. So stretchy fabrics are called knits, and they're fabrics that if you pull on them, they will give a lot. Woven fabrics do not do that, like quilting cotton. That is a great fabric for beginners to work with because you're not gonna run into some of the issues you do working with knits. Working with knits can be a little tricky at the sewing machine, so in order to save yourself some headache and also have some projects that you don't get frustrated with, work with woven fabrics. I would also recommend starting off with very simple sewing projects. You don't really want to have a ball gown or like a tailored suit be one of your first sewing projects ever, especially because some of those require more advanced sewing techniques and you just don't have the skills yet. I'm not saying you can't be ambitious, but just know that the first few projects you make, they might not turn out the way you want it to. Sew with fabrics you don't care about at first, like things you've thrifted, old bed sheets like very cheap fabric and save the nice expensive fabric for when you feel your skills are more up to the task and you you feel more confident that your sewing project will turn out the way you want it to. The worst thing you can do is sew with super expensive fabric and then end up ruining it because you tried a project that was far beyond what you could handle, which is something I wish I knew at the beginning. I started off with things like uh, baby blankets or placemats those are good beginner sewing projects. Pillowcases, pillow covers, something where you're not working with things like zippers or Velcro or any more advanced hardware. Just a few straight seams, nothing too curvy. And I personally find that working with clothing and trying to sew my own garments is, for me, harder than just making a quilt even because a quilt is more of a two-dimensional item and, you know, there's not a lot of the issues you have with fit. Getting a pattern out of the envelope to fit you can be very challenging and that's something there's entire courses on, there's lots of books. So just know those are some things that I wish I had known going into sewing. But start off with projects that you feel would be pretty easy for you and don't be afraid to ask for help either. Anyways, if you want to know how to use a sewing machine, I have a couple videos on using the Brother CS7000i. We're doing a series here called Learn to Sew in 2020, and I would love for you to join me. Consider subscribing to The Sewing Report for more videos just like this. I'm Jen, and I'll see you guys next time.